hosted by the President and Sabina Higgins. Our MC for today is the fabulous Tara Flynn. Hello. Hello, good evening. So, ladies and gentlemen, just before I announce the President in, in another few minutes, I'm just going to run through a few fire safety briefs and stuff like that in the unlikely event of. So, if a fire alarm does go off, uh, you can make your way out this exit here to my left and you'll make your way out into the gardens where there's a, a, a big acorn in the middle of the garden to the right. It's called the People's Acorn. So if we have to go over there, we'll just kind of form up round there in the unlikely event. Fingers crossed. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Uh, can I also just remind you uh, to put your phones on silent or maybe switch them off as well? Um, and that, that, that'd be great. Uh, just, I suppose, I'm going to step away from the microphone now and when the President arrives in, I'll, I'll ask you to join me in welcoming your host. You can give him a bit of a round of applause, if you can. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your attention and enjoy your afternoon. Thank you. Big acorns, even bigger oaks grow. <laughs> we're full of sayings like that today now, hopefully, because you're all so absolutely amazing. Now, thanks for leaving us up here now, Paul. That's great. Um, is the president nearby? Five. I'd say talk amongst yourselves. I, I, I can't <laughs> add it for that long. Um, although I have a lot of acorn facts. <laughs> yeah, no, I have a couple of made-up Phoenix Park facts, actually. Uh, they're not true, they're made up. Uh, there's one um, that, that all the deer in the Phoenix Park are actually uh, from Galway, um, but they were discovered to have Dublin accents and they were moved up here <laughs> in the late 1800s. Yeah. Uh, this was named, uh, it was named the Phoenix Park after an ancient brand of crisps, Phoenix crisps, so it was a bit like Tato Park back in the day, but they had to discontinue it due to not having had the invention of deep fat fryers yet. So they had plenty of salt though back then. Uh, so yeah, I've no more made up facts, so I'll let you talk amongst yourselves. I'll try and make up a couple more in case the president is late, but the big acorn, remember that, it's very important, it could save your lives. Acorns. I'll see you in five minutes. Thank you. Thank you to Paul. Thank you to Sergeant Paul Mulligan for the amazing info.
could sing a song, but I... <laughs> and here we go. <laughs> Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, will you please be upstanding and welcome your hosts, Uktaran Nahirn, President Michael D. Higgins and Sabina Higgins. A huge welcome also to everyone not in this room who's joining us via live stream. Turn around and give them a little wave on the camera there. Welcome, Fáilte. That's all the family members and pals who couldn't be here today. Hello. And a wave for Uchtaron himself. No, that'll start your day off right. Fantastic. I am so honoured to be back here with you again this year in the beautiful Phoenix Park, which of course has been host through the years to many national and international VIPs, Kanye West, Ed Sheeran, one of the popes before the days when they even had to do flat chairs in the Vatican. But this historic room, thank you, thank you. Uh, this, thanks very much, you're with me. Good, good, thanks. This historic room has had its fair share of VIPs too, but today you, the Goshka Award winners and your pals, you are the VIPs today, so give yourselves a huge round of applause. <laughs> they say that these days the, words inspire, the word inspiring is bandied about a bit too much. Um, it is on middle-aged person Instagram anyway. Uh, which is where I hang out. But <laughs> today we're going to use it very sincerely because that is the only word for what ye have achieved. I must confess that when I was asked to present these awards last year, I wasn't fully familiar with the Goshkas, being just outside the 26-year-old cut-off point myself. <laughs> that wasn't a joke now. What? What's this? What's this turping on me? It's terrible. But what I saw and heard last year absolutely blew me away, and I have no doubt it will be the same this year. Here, oh. incredible. Now, um, some of you, I hope that uh, you've all, did you have all had a lovely time in Ratter House? Mm -hmm. You did, you did. Give it a whoop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ratter House, yeah, yeah. <laughs> lovely. And that you got to mingle because part of today is creating this community. It's an absolutely brilliant one and now you're all getting to meet in the flesh. So that's a very important part about today. Now, how things are is not always so great. And one of the how things are that I don't like these days is that young people sometimes get bad press. You're probably all too aware of that. And some, you know, it, it's, there's no other word for what I saw last year than inspiring. You shouldn't get bad press at all. What I saw last year was young men and women inspiring, making a difference in their lives and the lives around them. Young people with a passion for human rights and equality and a vision for a country where no one gets left behind. And not just a vision, but a hands-on approach to being that difference, to changing that how things are. Now, some of you may think that I have the hard job up here at the microphone, and I do, it's very hard work. I had to make my own cue cards. It was, I was up very early with a bit of glue. Uh, but the real hard work, of course, has been done by all of you. You've put in the hours, days, weeks, and in the cases of some, even years, achieving your gold award, an achievement that cannot be underestimated. I would even say it's closer to a feat or an endeavour. You don't hear those words so often now. Something like Fionn McCool would have done, or Cucullin, maybe. That's who I'd liken you to. Do you know how few of us have ever completed an endeavour? I have never even started a feat, <laughs> even though I did make the cards. Now, in receiving your award today, you have shown determination, resilience, commitment to yourself and to others. You've bounced back from that horrendous curveball that life threw with COVID, and you have come out the other side. These are skills for life, which sometimes doesn't go the way you planned something I know a thing or two about. I don't always get to see 90 Day Fiancé before the spoilers go up on the internet. 
Thanks, you're still with me. That's very good. <laughs> 90 Day Fiancé fans. My job here today is to give you the rundown on what is going to happen, introduce the speakers, and to keep us on time. So I should probably stop talking about 90 Day Fiancé and cue cards and hand you over to the VIPs. So here is how this afternoon is going to go. A few practical points. First up, we will have the CEO of Gashka, Avril Ryan, followed by Dr. Katrina O'Sullivan, who will share her very inspiring story. Then we will have Uxaron Heron Michael D. Higgins, the patron, as you know, of these awards, who will address you and present you with your medals and certificates. Are you excited? <laughs> of course you are. It's okay to do a little woo. A little woo is no harm. There you go. To close things out, the chair of the Gashka Council, John Cunningham, will conclude the presentation section of the ceremony. There will be some photos outside, and today's celebrations will conclude with some refreshments. One lady was into that, and that's, that's all you need, one lady into the refreshments. It's lovely. And now, to welcome you on behalf of Gashka and to say a few words about your achievements, please put your hands together for our first speaker today, the CEO of Gashka, Avril Ryan. Trinona Mahagov Galair, Mwilabwik, a slash an Uktron, Augustivina Kurt Horst doing the Jean Aris and Uktron and you, Tom Anvro, Jola Vehan Shuh, Marfriv Imanak Nu or Rashka. Kahorjas Lagak Dinna, congratulations everyone. Today is a day to celebrate your achievements of our wonderful Gold Wardies who have come from all over the island of Ireland. Um, we are so proud to work with such a diverse range of youth organisations who see the value of Gashka for young people in terms of building confidence, increasing well-being, skills, networking and making a difference in our communities. Having a gold Gashka award is no easy feat, Tara. Um, and for many, it opens up opportunities and creates inspiration towards further education and learning, employability, career paths, lifelong pursuits and being a really engaged citizen. What makes your achievement even more special today is that you all undertook your gold award during the pandemic. Um, with the support of your amazing pals and your families and your friends, you took that personal responsibility to press forward on your path of self-development by truly embodying the principles and the values of the Gashka Awards. And you demonstrated that determination, resilience, leadership and community and spirit that we tried to encourage you all to do. Your personal skills range from taking part in musicals, guitar, singing and keyboard lessons and bagpiping, which I think is a first. Um, and as a fellow musician, it's so lovely to see how strongly creativity plays a part uh, for so many young people gaining their Gashka Award. Um, and that creativity is also seen in lots of the culinary skills that we read about in your portfolios. So I think a few of you might give MasterChef a run for its money. Um, what makes Gashka Awardees exceptional is not only were you working on yourselves, you were working on supporting others. And your community involvement activities were inspirational, from coaching to volunteering with children with additional needs, visiting and helping older people in nursing homes, and being the voice of other young people in schools and in colleges all around the country. That is thousands and thousands of hours giving your time for the greater good as brilliant young citizens. Your residential projects were as unique as you all are, and we had young people developing independent living skills, supporting children and families in Barrettstown, and several of you took part in Gashka's own residential, uh, really investigating the themes of the UN Sustainable Development Goals and being a global citizen. And, and for us, that's the cornerstone of what we're asking young people to consider when they are looking at doing their Gashka Awards, those, um, those themes around being a great global citizen. I know how much effort you've also put into your physical well-being, from park runs to walking to team sports and a range of other activities. One of the most striking things that I've seen from all of you is your capacity to have empathy for others and keep empathy with you as your friend, for it's vital to make the world better, vital for your communities to welcome and understand perspectives, experiences and differences. And it reminds us all that sometimes all we have to do is step in someone else's shoes to really listen and understand. My vision as the CEO of Gashka is that every young person, regardless of their circumstance, can see themselves in Gashka. And that means we are working really hard to explore new ways to support participation and access. So with that in mind, as Gashka heads towards its 40th anniversary in 2025, I would ask our new Gold Wardies to consider 
how can you continue to be part of the Gashka story, the Gashka family? Think about your, the impact Gashka has had on your life and others and join us as an ambassador. I wish to thank all of the staff of the Office of the President, particularly Secretary General Orla O'Hanrahan and Deputy Secretary George Burke. George is always on the other end of the phone, so thank you so much. I want to thank my brilliant colleagues in Gashka for all their work making today possible, particularly Kleena, Louise, Paul and Shane. The Gashka staff are such a wonderful team of people who are the stewards of the programme and care deeply about Gashka's participants, awardees and pals. And we see that every day in their tremendous joyousness as they come to work. Um, to our wonderful Chair John Cunningham and the Gashka Council, thank you for your commitment to the organisation and for volunteering so much of your personal time for us, so thank you for that. Thank you to the amazing uh, Gold Award President Award leaders, some of whom are here today, and I very much look forward to meeting the rest of you um, and thanking you personally at our next special PAL event. Um, PALs give so much uh, for the young people and they are the people who make the awards so uh, accessible to so many. And so too, thank you to all the families and the friends who support awardees. You're all heroes and particularly in these last few years. Uh, we also have some special partners here today. I'd like to thank Kate Thompson and James McClemmons from the Duke of Edinburgh's Ward in Northern Ireland who partner with Gashka to ensure young people have a choice of certification um, in Northern Ireland through our joint award initiative together. Uh, thanks also to Orla Corrigan, the Principal Officer, and Paula Keatley, the Assistant Principal Officer from our own Department of Children, Equality, Disability, Integration and Youth. Um, <laughs> so thank you for being here. We're delighted. Um, most of all, I would like to thank President Higgins, who dedicates so much of his time uh, to celebrating and encouraging young people to dream big and fulfil their potential. Um, we're also proud to have you as our president and so delighted that yourself and Sabina have invited us here today. So thank you so much. Gaurav Mila Mahagat Galer. Gaurav Mahagat, Avril, and keep empathy with you, I think is a beautiful line from that lovely speech. Keep empathy with you. Can't go too far wrong with that at the heart of everything. It is time for our keynote speaker, and I'm very excited to introduce her. Uh, she is a psychologist and memoirist, and it's Dr. Katrina O'Sullivan, whose first book, Poor, describes the far-reaching impact of childhood poverty. It debuted at number one on the Irish nonfiction bestseller list. Poor chronicles Dr. O'Sullivan's journey from her parents' addiction to teenage pregnancy, homelessness, to graduating with a PhD from Trinity College and becoming an award-winning lecturer, challenging barriers to education. Her message is one of giving kids hope for their futures, as well as practical support and meaningful opportunities. Please welcome Dr. Katrina O'Sullivan. Hello. I feel really bad that I'm not going to be able to speak that much Irish, so I'll say dear dwits. And I know, I know Slán Leave as well. I'm currently doing an Iwa, because um, I was just in Donegal. Um, I'm doing Teg 1. It's really hard. Anyway, hello, thank you everybody for having me here today. I feel really privileged to be in this room, especially with Michael D. Higgins and everybody else, all the wonderful awardees. I bet some of the young people here are wondering who the hell I am. And we're probably hoping for Taylor Swift. <laughs> Hopefully I can sing a few songs at the end. I suppose I've been invited to speak to you today because I have a very unique story. My life story is different to most, be uh, most people's and hopefully if I tell it right and control my nerves, you might be inspired by it to continue being the great people you already are and to use your newly developed skills in the right way. So my name is Dr. Katrina O'Sullivan and I like to lead with doctor because I'm the first in my family to be a doctor. I'm actually one of the first in my family not to go to prison. That's not a joke, <laughs> but it is quite funny. I grew up in a place very different to the Aris and very different to Trinity College. Um, I grew up poor, and what that means is I regularly had no food in my home. I didn't have many hugs in the morning, and no one read to me at night. My mum and dad, oh, I feel emotional, but my mum and dad were drug addicts, and drug addiction is an illness which robs people of their lives. It makes people lose their mind and often their ability to care for the people in their lives who they love deep, dearly. People who have, uh, who have addictions are generally poor people. And when you're poor, it affects everything. 
I didn't believe I was very good at anything. I was the smelly kid at school. I had nits and no one wanted to play with me. I was also really scared all the time. When you're poor, it's hard to perform in school. I couldn't sit all day and learn like everybody else. Instead, I'd be screaming and shouting and distracting the other kids. Most teachers hated having me in their class. I never had a pen. I never had my books. I never had a bag. But I hadn't had a meal most days, so what did they expect? But I was really lucky. Behind all of the messing, I was this really bright, vivacious, intelligent girl who wanted to learn, mo like most little kids. And I was a reader from a really young age. My dad blessed me with a love of books from a really young age. And I was so lucky that I had two teachers along the way that actually saw me. They saw my potential and decided to help me. The first one was Mrs. Arkinson. She was an Irish lady. We were an Irish family in the middle of the UK and when you meet another Irish person, it's deadly. <laughs> the first day of school, she was like, you're an Irish girl like me and I felt like I'd been seen. She treated me like I was a good girl. She gave me jobs to do. She brought me clothes to wear and every morning she would give me a breakfast and a hug before school. She also taught me how to wash myself. Every day she'd give me a towel and a clean pair of underwear so I didn't smell so bad. Maybe the kids would play with me. I was lucky in secondary school too, Mr. Pickering, my English teacher. He told me a story actually, he was poor too. He'd gone to work in the mines when he was 15 and then found education when he was 30. And he found this way to connect with me. He made me want to learn. He believed in me. One evening, it was parent teaching evening. There was a knock at my door and it was him. I thought, Shit, I'm in trouble. <laughs> I was always in trouble by then. He asked to talk to my dad and I stood behind the door listening. He said, Mr. O'Sullivan, I was expecting to see you at Parent Teacher Evening this evening. I wanted to tell you how amazing your daughter is, how talented she is. She's so much potential. He then said to my dad, I think you should be ashamed of yourself for not supporting her. Having this man, this teacher, tell my dad off, changed how I saw myself. Behind the door, I swear I grew two inches. I was something to somebody. Even with his health, help, I still failed in school. I got pregnant at 15 and left. I was homeless and gave birth to my eldest son, John, who's an amazing man now, um, in a homeless hostel. Roll on five years and I'm living in Dublin One, in Summerhill. I'm on my social welfare, happy as Larry. I've got the rental accommodation scheme and I'm cleaning Connolly Station and I'm serving lunch sausage rolls to students in the Institute of Education. I was the dinner lady and I was going nowhere. I didn't know anyone who did anything different. I heard, that one, uh, I heard about this programme called the Trinity Access Programme. A friend of mine, another girl from town, she got in. She was in Trinity studying law. And I thought, if she could do it, maybe I could. I applied. I never forget the interview. Three poshies, they're all poshies to me. Three poshies asking me about questions about how poor I was and why I was there. But then they asked me about books. And I knew I had the place because I was a bright, vivacious girl, and I could talk about the things I loved really well. And this is where my life changed. Going to Trinity taught me something about myself that I never knew before. I found out that I'm a really, really clever girl. I'm intelligent. I found out that I can achieve, I can achieve and I learned that I was good enough. I also learned that the education system and its structure had failed me. And, when, I, and the right place, and run, when the right supports are put in place, people like me, poor people, can not only flourish, but we can actually take over the world. The Trinity Access Programme taught me how to study, and Trinity College taught me how to think and feel differently about the world. Everybody should have this right. I graduated top of my class from psychology. For those who don't know about university, I got a first class honours, or an A star, for those who are leaving search. Thank you. I was given a scholarship to become a doctor of psychology and my experience in college and now as a professor in Maynooth University has taught me some lessons which I really want to share with you today and hopefully you can use them in the next phase of your Goshka journey. The first one is never judge a book by its cover. Behind every bold kid or adult is a story and a person. I've learned that potential isn't, is equally distributed while opportunity is not. And people who have addictions or are poor often don't have the same opportunities as everybody else. If you judge me by my anger, by my lack of engagement or my bad attitude, 
or my interest in boys rather than books. <laughs> You'd have seen someone, someone who wasn't motivated, someone who didn't care, someone without potential. Really, I was just a sad, hurt girl who needed care more than the curriculum. Remember this for your future. The second lesson is the power of one good person. Miss Arkinson, Mr. Pickering, and many others in my story placed a little light inside my darkened soul, which guided me way beyond the classroom. Try to always believe in people without expectation and go the extra mile for them. You will never regret helping someone else. The final lesson is use your privilege to make the world fairer. The hardest lesson of my life was not my parents' addiction or my teenage pregnancy. It was studying in Trinity College and seeing how much people have and how little time they spend using what they have to make the world fairer. The Goshka Award is part of your privilege now, teaching you how to succeed, how to be resilient, how to contribute, how to achieve. But what you do with these gifts is now up to you. My lesson has been used to use my privilege, which is my poverty and my education, to try and make things better for other people like me. I look forward to seeing the impact your privilege will have on the world. Congratulations on your awards, and thank you for letting me be here and share my story with you. Katrina O'Sullivan, much better than Taylor Swift, I think you'll agree, <laughs> in this context Less today. Expensive. Less expensive. Well, for now, I mean, just keep, keep an eye on that. <laughs> that was absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. It's a, a beautiful story, and I, I know that um, lessons I'm going to take forward today, so I hope all of you will as well. Now, very few people could follow that kind of a speech other than the Uthran and yourselves. So that is the section we are moving on to next. It is almost time for the awards. Before that, seeing as we're speaking about Taylor Swift, a bit of choreography. So I'm going to try and get this right now. What's going to happen is we, I will call your name out from here and there'll be in alphabetical order by your first names. You'll pop up here, you'll meet the president and, and Avril Ryan from Gashka. You'll meet them here, you will get your award, have a little photo. Proceed over to that side of the room where you'll get your certificate. Is this making sense so far? Or am I, yeah, am yeah. I making no sense at all? Great, okay, grand. Go around that way. And then you get your certificate and then back to your seat in your own time. And um, if I pronounce your name wrong, don't be shy. Come up to me and say, Tara, that's wrong. And whisper me the right one and I will say it correctly again. As someone who gets called Tanya and Tina all the time, I won't be affronted. Let me know. So uh, now, the moments have arrived. To address you and hand your hand out your hard-earned awards, please welcome our wonderful host for the day, Uthron Heron, Michael D. Higgins. Guinea Corer and Gedal Shasta Firkin Fulcher of Villiger, or as an Uthron as a head and Shomresha. At a M. Shehinanar on Creedin Eden and Dr. Douglas Stichiade. May I just say, first of all, this ceremony and all of you who are receiving gold awards is that I hope you recall this day as a very, very special day. And uh, it's, it's your day, and uh, I want to say a few words about it. I think it, if you are recalling it as your special day, you, you should think about what an extraordinary privilege it is to have heard what we have just heard from Professor Sullivan. And I, I congratulate you on that. You, I, 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 allow me to say it in Irish and then I will say it in English. So, there is an authenticity in what you're speaking of, of what you have said. Uh, that uh, deeply impresses all of us. And in the end of the day, uh, these are the changes that I would like to see happening to some extent, in uh, many ways. Uh, there is nothing more important or creative than the act of performance itself. 
And in the act of performance, when it is combined with a statement in relation to the circumstances of the life of the self, you always know that there is something special happening. And there has, in fact, been something special happening. You are not publicising your book, which is excellent. You're talking about your life. And you're talking about a concept which uh, is incredibly important, I think, in Ireland in relation to where we are now. Uh, it's interesting, the title you have, you see, poor, you know. Uh, uh, but the word poor wasn't in widespread usage in Ireland during most of my life. People avoided it. Sister Stanislaus Kennedy, my colleague Shinis Kennedy, long dead now, and others, uh, discovered poverty in Kilkenny at a conference in 1974. <laughs> <laughs> and, and in a way, it showed up something that was very, very important uh, in Ireland. People weren't talking about what you've just experienced now. They were talking about people who are different, and in a curious way, the phrase that has made, lingered in the public speeches now, uh, leaving nobody behind, has a very, very serious deficiency attached to it. It is that uh, the assumption is that the most of the people are all right, well on their way, and it's only a case of dragging the people after us and things like that. Uh, we are not all right, far, far from it. Uh, be it in relation to what you have described, uh, be it in relation uh, to housing, be it in relation to the right of every child to have the same experience in relation to books, and uh, people having private meet, private fundraisers to buy books for schools and so forth. So it's important for the language to mean something. And in a way, it was one of the biggest issues we have facing us at the present time, is a kind of a dead language in which we find it necessary, in fact, to keep using what we found are, are satisfying self-congratulatory phrases, uh, as if you needed a dose of integration. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of a man in Clifton one time saying to me, about a to uh, we were talking about tourism, we're fierce friendly, aren't we? <laughs> well, we're very good at this kind of, as it were, uh, getting language done. And what you have... Uh, told us today. I could tell you very much. I don't t talk much about my own life because I have two and a half years here in the presidency to go, but I can relate to what you have said. My mother, for example, entered the Augustinian church in Limerick by the side door because she didn't have the penny to push anything in the front door. My sisters and my father had lived, I think, all together in uh, 12 different flats in Limerick. <coughs> And then the other side of it, Lisa and Kaysen going to school in County Clare. There were four of us, and there was only money for two bicycles. I don't say much of it, because we're in an atmosphere, and some of this could, in fact, not... I don't never mind it being turned against me, but it will turn against those people who have had the courage that I've had the privilege to work with in my life. At 82, I have met such wonderful, wonderful people, I was speaking to some of them earlier this week in the trade union movement. Great, great people. But the importance to be able to tell the truth, to tell the truth of the thing. And that is so important. But the most important to this notion about it is that events are events and bits of language are bits of language and so forth. It's time to get past that. You always, those of us who are in the performing end of things in many ways, uh, we'll always know who's for real. I've known Sabina, my partner in my life, who's an actor, and we, seconds in your note, in a, in a way. So this is my... F I don't give any messages to young people. When I became president 11 years ago, I had one sentence. I quoted a great, great writer uh, who said, be the arrow, not the target. And I spoke to 800 young people. And what came back from the 800 young people, including people in prisons, was how never out of the top four of the, what they wanted for, uh, was equality. And, you know, that's where the energy is. And, you know, what I think is so important as well among the, those younger people, never outside of the top five, was their care for older people. And when we had the acorn being established down here in the sculpture garden, and youngsters were pushing into it messages, 
They said, better Ireland for my granny, and so forth and so forth. And that's what it's about. But the most interesting thing about what goes wrong are when people find themselves not only believing in abstractions, these are versions of reality rather than reality. Uh, the versions of reality rather than, uh, rather than reality. In reality are the people we're passing who are tense on the sides of the road and uh, which is and so forth. And you don't main thing about it. And mending is into the fantastic when we were very lucky to be given the opportunity to being able to look at it and to say, I'm going to have a, a chance to try and understand this. And then after that, I'm going to have enough bit of energy left to try and change it. And you'll know them like a shot. And this is the whole, all artifice that we've got in, 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 in professions like public relations. It's the way you say it. And, uh, people say to me, you know, your speech went down well. Well, really, what does that mean at all? But quite a fact of the matter is, was it making a connection with what people were experiencing? And will we all get somewhere from it? And that is uh, really what is important. Every now and again, I am actually allowing myself these reflections these days for many different reasons. And it is because of, see, of the urgency of the times. It's very important when the energy is around. Just wonderful to see, for example, children picking interested in nature, picking up maggots and flies and not being afraid of them, looking in their hand and so forth. Looking at all, when I visit the schools and I see the people from all the cultures, 40 nationalities present. And I so thank all the young teachers as well. And I see them who spent hours in choirs risking the level of that. And, 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 and all those years ago, as I, you have, might have heard me recently, 50 years ago, uh, talking when I was uh, working, uh, when I was working on the Retros Humanos on human rights uh, and so forth. And people like my friend Niall Stokes and others. And he said to me very interestingly, I used to be going home, you know, uh, from the door uh, to where I was staying, and I'd meet young fellows, and it was around the time of the First World Cup, and they'd say, Oh, no, you take that small girl, do you think that? And I would say to them, Well, that you'd have to go to the embassy for those. And what was one of the things about it, they would say, These were the people, who, he said, These are the people who want to hear what is happening. And these are the people who are really having uh, had the right not just to hear the music, but also to hear, uh, uh, to hear what is happening. And I, I think we have come through an awful lot. So therefore, I actually think when Paddy Hillary picked the word Gashka, it's interesting the word Gashka itself. One of the things, when people would be at the end of the day and they would be run out of compliments for to say something that had been incredibly important, that had been accomplished, and whatever they would say in Irish, Rinzo Gashka! Or they would say to Gashka, Eat the Gentagot. No more than they would shout out and get a Mograin who used into music or whatever. And what they would say is that they couldn't put a full title on it and what it was that you've achieved. And all of the gold recipients this, uh, this today, I have to say to them, is that you picked the project and there were the times when it was going well. And there were the times that was a kind of the hit on it. But then there are the times I'm keeping this going, and then there are other times and so forth. I was a Gokim Vicar, just I was Fisher for. And I do want to thank all those mentors and the parents and the teachers and others who kind of bring people through uh, that period where in fact you needed uh, where you needed to the lift. But the Awards, as we evolved over the year, many, many cases, something was happening, I think, and when I was speaking, really, uh, co-telling those, suggesting there would be the arrow, uh, not the target, which is the very, very last speech of, uh, who is it all, you can remind me? Raymond Williams. Sorry? Raymond Williams. Raymond Williams. Raymond Williams, in fact, who wrote the preface for a very famous book called Sit Down and Be Counted which is about problems in RT, you want to start. It's the reason why, <laughs> which is the reason why Lila Doolin and, uh, and Bob, Bob Quinn and, and, and Jack Dowling all resigned as directors of television for because of, uh, they wanted to have 
to have it full of talent and so forth. So, in many, many ways, uh, I've moved on myself from description. Uh, I think as well, I think I've moved on from kind of mimetic things. I actually think it's necessary now to be thinking uh, in terms of what is possible. And everything, it might appear at times, as it does now, in a very, very threatening atmosphere. But it's at that time that actually you need the most inspirational uh, uh, thinking. I always think about it, uh, about sometimes about what, what people do, but the heroism of people uh, uh, in, in, in many cases. It's the people in whose the food kitchens that I stood on and so on. And you know the most interesting thing, you would know this better than me in many cases, but I remember being in these food kitchens in some, it's sometimes important. It's important that we recognise uh, what people were doing and, and so forth. But what people actually miss out, and this is a class thing in Ireland in a way, is that the humour people have actually, that it isn't only about getting so many uh, dishes out and, and, that, and, and things like that, but it is actually the conversation. I had a great benefit in my life of working in bars, I worked as a waiter in the summer and so forth. But it is actually, this is the point, that richness is not about money at all. Uh, richness is about the quality of the relationships. I remember uh, uh, we sorting letters, we used to get a job at Christmas sorting letters when there were sorting offices and we'd be put, and the conversations between myself and workers. And that is why work is more than in fact actually just about wages and what you can spend. It is about the way you spend your life with other, uh, 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 life with life with other people. But they're absolutely the good news about it is there's no excuse now whatsoever at any part of our planet for people being short of the basic necessities of uh, food and education and, uh, and that. And that's why it is so extract. But I think you'll notice as well in many cases the few, the, all of you who are getting the medals today, there's, sometimes it's collective because I was looking at the project, you're doing things that involve others. But the most important times are the times when you'll be looking, take today, and take today and say, you know, <clears throat> yeah, times are tough, but it's done, but it isn't the end of anything. And I have an opportunity of listening to people who have been describing different opportunities that are there in life and new things to do. And what is our bet, how lucky we all are this, in relation to the big issues of climate diversity, in relation, in relation to sustainable development, in relation to all of these issues, in relation to uh, uh, issues of peace, issues of re uh, rejection uh, of violence. Maybe there is one last thing I wanted to say, very, very, very important, and that is about the word respect. All of that wonderful movement for Madre Nadura, the respect for nature, respect for people of difference, respect inter people, gen people of choices and in relation all of that. It is the most marvellous achievement uh, to be able to say that one is able to deal with all this diversity in a way of giving respect. Why should, uh, I have to be very careful now about all of this thesis is sometimes and that is in many cases, why should people be interested in two wrestling billionaires <laughs> uh, as the planet dies? And uh, for the many, many cases. And you know what I used to think of when I uh, look back on, on my long life and all the different campaigns and everything? To be able to sit next to another person of whatever circumstance and receive warmth respect and humanity and so forth. And it is why the assumption uh, that the people that the professor was describing, they're not from another planet, uh, they're us. And this is the thing where it is as well. And people have jokes and moments of great sadness and moments of loneliness and so forth. I often think as a poet when I'm writing back in that, I often think back of uh, 15th of August 1946, I'm five years old, 
I, my brother and I are leaving my mother and my father and my sisters to uh, uh, to be, be reared in another part of Ireland and, and, uh, and so forth. And the excitement of a five-year-old at the same time, I often look back on it now. I cannot, we cannot live other people's lives, but we can take on the responsibility that of all the lives that we touch and of all the opportunities that we will have in all of the different lives of taking that experience that we achieved, that you achieved for yourselves as gold recipients now, and enabling that in all of those other people. I do want to thank the staff of Orson Nutron for enabling us to hold this event here uh, uh, in, as I said, in Oris de Hida, in, in, in Oris and Nutron. And I do hope that Gershka continues with all his work of extension and uh, all of the important work, when it's Paddy's work, um, now all those work by back in the 1950s. When Paddy Healy reused that word, Gashka, there were 55, there were 250,000 people had left Ireland between 1955 and 1960. And in many cases, they were living in very, very important settlement. And this isn't in many cases, so this is a celebratory occasion, it's Kaluruk. And this is the important part about it all is, we're able to celebrate all of our recipients now, because we're moving into a new phase, with new sets of values that are beyond any individualism, beyond any materialism, value things like respect, kindness, as well as that, which is an, uh, uh, such an important word, and also the importance of language, that we, all words matter. And even if we have to pause before we give up big spiels of speeches and everything like that, is that when the words come, for them to mean something, something that is part of us, something that is part of what we hope for ourselves and so on. August on Tarkuig and Gagas Rocks, Barnaktari, a Gagra to make a shul in him on the pier, or Yatsan to make shiv shiv went a chan of us. I so wish you all, I congratulate your recipients, I thank all those who help you in any way, if you call it. I so thank this a wonderful, wonderful speech we've had to, to, to tell us here, reminding us in the end of the day the authenticity of our lives, the authenticity of our lives, respect between all lives, respect between people of all cultures, peace. We're not on this planet as a species to be aggressively making war. We're there to try, in fact, actually deal with the conditions in which will enable fulfilment to happen, not just for our species, but for all of the species of the world. Mavuikas live. Thank you very much. Before we start the awards. <laughs> A round of applause for the gentleman. <laughs> Nothing can happen without you. So, speaking of rounds of applause, what we're going to do is, is that if it's okay with you guys, we'll hold the applause till the end because we are so lucky to have such a lovely long list of names. We'll hold the applause till the end because the worst thing of all would be if we started to flag halfway through. And it'll help us move nice and swiftly along and then we'll have a huge big cheer at the end. Does that work for all of you? Amazing, thank you. Are we ready to start the names? Who's excited for their awards? I know I am. Me, but good, good woman yourself. <laughs> Good woman, me. Yes, amazing, brilliant. Okay, here we go. Everyone ready? Okay, here we go. Ashling Donlan. Please come up, Ashling. It's instinctive, isn't it? If, you, if, it, does, if it happens, don't worry. Is Ashling here? There she is. There's Ashling. It's okay, don't worry. And yes, oh, please come through this way. Sorry, my choreography was terrible, clearly. Come, please come through this way and we'll go around in a C shape. Ashling Page. 
Will Ashling be talked? Great. We'll come through this way, guys, if we can. This way and come round that way in a seat. Alana Quinn. Alana coming? Yeah, great. Good woman. Thanks, Alana. Alana Ryan. Amy Mooney. Amy Thompson. Anna O'Shaughnessy. Aoife Nichoran. Ashley Bulger. Moving on to bees, Beth French. Kathleen Lyons. Or Kathleen? Caitlin? Thank you. Thank you for the correction. That's what I need. Charlotte Cunahan. Chloe O'Mahony. Kira Lennon will be next up. Kira Lennon. Kieran Sears. Connor Dillon. Connor Dillon here? Is Connor Dillon here? Yes, amazing. Here's Connor. Connell Boyle. Connell O'Reilly. Connor Gannon. Dale Barry O'Sullivan. David Meehan. Thank you. 
Domus Kaliskanas. Is that right? Close enough? Do you me the right? Kalisnikas. Kalisnikas. Thank you for the correction. <laughs> Apologies. Elizabeth McGrath. Emily O'Reilly. Emma Hurley. Aaron McIver. Faye Murphy. Virgil Carney. Hazel Murray. Holly McFarland. Ian Coleman Horgan. Isabella Gerlano. Jack Bogue. Jacob Kostansky. James Dolan. James Jacobs. Jasmine Campto. Jason Kelly. Jill Pitcher Farrell. Jill Pitcher Farrell. John Bransfield. Kate Gorgon. Christoph Kogan. Sogan. Oh, thank you. Christoph Sogan. Apologies. Thanks, Christoph. Are you Kimmy? Yeah. Kim Lister Martin. Laura Martel. Lauren Victor. Leo Micklem. Luke McMahon. Michael Gadoloff. Michael. 
Nathan O'Rourke. Niall Henry. Neve Cafferkey. Neve Hockeyan. Nicola Doyle. Noah Cowman. Orla Williams. Oscar Fitzgerald. Rebecca Banville. Rebecca Elm. Rosemary Cushion. Rosemary Vincent. Sarah Brady. Sean Toomey. Sean here? Yay, Sean. Welcome. <laughs> Sheila Connolly. Sinead Kinsella. Shea for Collins O'Regan. Tommy Holhan. Thrasen Niargoin. And Tristram Alexander Ryan. We knew they are award winners. We can do better than that. with our choreography badly explained by me a little bit of a traffic jam which we all sorted out together and for teaching me to say your names properly I really appreciate it so to conclude this portion of the ceremony we turn back to the Gashka Council please welcome the chair John Cunningham good afternoon everybody and on behalf of myself and the council of many of whom are here, you're all very welcome today to this extraordinary and special event. What struck me just as the speeches have been shared was the importance of words and the importance of stories. So Katrina and the president gave us two extraordinary provocative speeches. And it's important to understand, as the president said, that words matter. And we must learn and listen and take what we can from these experiences to be that ver best version of ourselves. And what Gashka was always about was trying to ensure that everybody could find the space to be the best version of themselves. When I was appointed chair of the President's Award a number of years ago, I was challenged by the President to ensure that we made Gashka as accessible uh, and as inclusive as possible. And I think today has been an extraordinary demonstration of how that has been achieved. And it really is so powerful and emotional to see the journeys that people have taken and you 
just must all feel that extraordinary sense of pride today. Um, again, I suppose, this wouldn't happen without the pa There's lots of people. There's family, there's friends, there's school teachers. But the PALS, the President's Award Leaders, play this extraordinary voluntary role where they give their time and their effort and their participation to guide all of you through this really remarkable journey. Now, I know many are online today, and we will have an opportunity at the end of the year to celebrate and thank them. But again, a demonstration of the power that people have. And the President mentioned Sister Stan. I was lucky enough to be chairman of the Immigrant Council of Ireland for 12 years, which Sister Stan founded. And she spoke about social justice, human rights, and the power of one. We all have the ability <coughs> to make a difference, no matter how big or small. And again, it struck me today that whatever way we look at it, we reside in the top 2 or 3% of people on the planet with regard to privilege and opportunity. And to be here today as guests of the President Sabina in their home to receive this gold award is an extraordinarily important junction in your lives and for that journey. So for all of you, I'd say it is about celebration. It's about thanks. And again, this stunning sense of being able to tell your own truth. And the, the, the President alluded to this. You've all been given the skills and the power and the support to be the truest version of yourselves, hopefully, but to take that truth into your lives and see how you can affect and improve other people's lives. It also struck me today that the power, and Katrina, I have to say that your story and your sharing with us, first of all, thank you, and the power of it, but that stunning sense of one responsible adult at any stage in your life taking an interest, and even for those of you who have the glory and the joy of a supportive family and friends, to have somebody independent of that take an interest and take time is so powerful. Avril made the comment about when you're finished here today, you're not finished anything, you're actually starting on a journey. And you actually also have a responsibility now. Not just a choice, you have a responsibility to take forward that learning and be that person who can change somebody else's life. Um, that sense again of equality that the President alluded to. We must all understand that we've got this job and this responsibility to make that difference and to have respect for ourselves and for those around us. And again, one word that I just think is so important in all of our existence is that sense of gratitude and to be grateful for the opportunities that we have and the, 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 the things around us. So the words I've just shared now have just come from today's event. And on my behalf, on behalf of Gashka, and again, if I could also say, how lucky are we to have a president like Michael D. Higgins and Sabina. It is such a joy for us to be here to celebrate. This is the, as I think, Uktaran is the highest order you can bestow on anybody, the gold award. You all have it. No one can take it from you. And you join an alumnus of over 300,000 people who've been through the process. But they haven't got gold awards, but they're just bronze and silver. <laughs> right? But for those, you're in a very exclusive club. And I think, again, on our behalf today, it is a celebration of what you've achieved, the support you've got from those pals and those people around you, and a thanks to the President Sabina for having us here today in Oris and Uktaran. What an extraordinary place to celebrate this. So again, just to say, on our behalf and on Council's behalf, Gaurav Mila Mila Mahagat, and well done. Thank you so much, John. Thank you, thank you to all of Gashka, and thank you all for having me here today. Before we close out this portion of the events, I would like to welcome Ashling Donnellan and Ashling Page, who would like to make a presentation on behalf of all the young people, the Gashka team, and Council. If we could have the two Ashlings, please. Thank you, Ashlings. Gurb Mahagoyf. 
<laughs> I'd love an aide to come, would you? I'd love one. <laughs> be great. Um, listen, thank you all so much for being here. It's not quite over. There will be some photographs outside. You'll be directed where to go. And then there'll be some refreshments in the main house, I believe. Are you excited about that? Yeah. I would be if I were you. Yes, yes, get it. Get it into you. Amazing. Um, and, and then you'll be brought back to Ratra House to pick up your portfolios, many of which will be leafed through by future generations. I'm sure they'll be set in stone somewhere. They're absolutely incredible. Thank you for having me. Thanks for bearing with me. I just like to say I've learned an awful lot today. I've been very appreciative to be here. Go out, boast a little bit tonight. Bigi brodu, lots of fain and uh, go and have an amazing rest of day. I'm going to hand you back to say goodbye and thank you, Uktharan August Saivin. I hand you back to Sergeant Paul Mulligan. Oh, God, me and Here he is, the man who opened it all. Show you. Ladies and gentlemen, can you give a huge round of applause for our fantastic MC, Tara Flynn? Oh. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, before we go up to the main house into the state reception room for some refreshments with the President and Sabina, can you please be upstanding for the departure of your hosts, the President and Sabina Higgins?